Thank you for joining us. With us today is Joe Smolinski, and he is a funeral director, and we're going to be talking about the topics of how to prepare the body, the role of the death certificate, and what to do to do some advanced funeral planning if, in fact, that's an option for you. He has had many, many years of experience in the funeral industry, and it is our pleasure to have him join us today. Yes, thank you, thank, Joe. Absolutely. Thank you, Nicole. It's a privilege to be here. Yeah. So a lot of the families that are watching this, um, death is probably imminent for a loved one, or perhaps mm -hmm. the loved one has just passed. And so I know there's a lot of different topics around funeral planning that we really should touch on, mm -hmm. because it's really not something that folks talk, think about often unless they're faced absolutely. with it. So thank you for taking the time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we thought would be really important to discuss was upon someone's death, what happens? What are some of the choices that you have as far as the disposition of the person's body? Um, yeah, and there's a lot of choices. Um, almost, uh, there's more and more as time goes on. And it used to be that all we had was traditional. It was, we did what mom and dad did, we did what grandma and grandpa did. But nowadays, there are so many other things that we can do and it can become complicated. Mm -hmm. So, um, Traditional burial will probably always exist. So some of the other ways that um, we're seeing more people um, uh, be involved with disposition, such as cremation. Cremation has, has overcome um, burial in many states. And uh, North Carolina burial, which means? Meaning there, there's more cremation than burial mm -hmm. at this point. So okay. cremation is a large part of what America is, is doing at this point. Um, green burial is another option. What's that? Um, green burial is, uh, well, there's a lot of aspects to it. So green burial is being environmentally conscious mm -hmm. about the choice that you have with burial. So meaning no embalming. Okay, embalming has chemicals, um, in, involves chemicals in the body, mm -hmm. and so we're void of chemicals. Um, the casket is biodegradable. Mm -hmm. um, there is no vault, mm -hmm. and uh, the cemetery plot is very natural. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to see manicured lawns, mm -hmm. um, no chemically treated grass. Mm -hmm. It's very natural. So it's a natural burial. So if you already have a burial plot in a cemetery, in mom's cemetery, would a green burial be an option for you? Probably not, okay. unless that that spot was designated for a green burial or okay. a natural burial. Okay. It's very specific. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some other choices. Um, anatomical donation is another choice. Okay. Okay. And Especially in this area with all these teaching schools. Yes, absolutely. Um, and we may get into some of the details involving that, and I'll let you mm -hmm. lead the way on that. But um, yes, the teaching schools, and there are um, organizations outside of the state that um, allow for um, anatomical donation. And it can vary, that donation can vary from um, being something that benefits students mm -hmm. to something that benefits doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and it will all depend on what organization you choose. So the folks watching this today have a loved one who's very ill or has since passed. Mm -hmm. the f when the loved one passes on, what is the first step? What's the first piece of the puzzle as far as the role of the funeral home and the funeral director? Right. Um, the first step is going to be contacting the funeral home, of course. Um, our first contact with the family is at the house, uh, maybe on the phone. So let's back up from there mm -hmm. though, contact the funeral home. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't even make that kind of a choice. Mm -hmm. So it, they don't plan where they're gonna have their funeral. So I mean, kind of. That's true. How, how does that all there start? Are, yeah, I mean, there are times where we're getting pricing calls or right when a person questions passes. Okay. Um, when somebody passes. So you're right, sometimes the decision hasn't been made. And, and I hope the people that are listening uh, maybe make the step to start researching soon. Mm -hmm. um, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with uh, getting, getting the ideas ahead of time. So um, yes, we, we see calls sometimes in the middle of the night and the questions mainly revolve around what are you offering, what can I do, and what is the price? Okay. And um, that, that would be the first step in you know, our communication. So then if somebody had chosen you, right. then what happens? So if they had chosen us, um, we normally arrive to the home or the nursing home or the hospital within an hour is normally about the time frame. Is that the time frame legally you're supposed to be there? There's no or? legal requirement. Okay. It's a matter of uh, respect to the family and accountability by the funeral home. You want to be there timely, um, just as a hospice nurse would want to arrive to the mm -hmm. patient's house quickly, so do we. And um, you know, normally 
I would say normally the family is there, is mm -hmm. present with the body, and sometimes they are not. Um, but if they are there, um, we engage them in conversation about um, where the body is going, mm -hmm. normally to the funeral home, of course. Um, sometimes we may ask if they are wanting embalming um, and if they have any idea about what services may take place, just so we can get an idea of what to do for the next so step. So all that happens in the home? Right it, then. It can. Mm -hmm. um, those are some questions they may expect. Mm -hmm, all mm -hmm. right. And if not, um, let's say there is no family there, or maybe the family is not really in the in the mode to talk at the mm -hmm. at that point. Um, we will just engage them in conversation the next day mm -hmm. or later, and talk about all those points. But one of the biggest thing is setting an appointment for that initial meeting at the funeral home. So who comes to retrieve the body? I mean, is that? I mean. Yep, some, you have specially trained people that do that? I mean, how does that work? There are. Um, sometimes it is funeral home staff. Other times it's a transport business. Oh. So if, the, if it is a transport business, they should be licensed by the, the North Carolina Board of Funeral Service, mm -hmm. and you can check that on their website, mm -hmm. ncbfs.org. Mm -hmm. um, and if it is a funeral home staff member, um, well, they were specifically trained for that as well. And they should always be respectful. Uh, under no circumstance should they be disrespectful. And if you see anything unusual, feel uncomfortable, um, you really need to contact the funeral home or reconsider. You can always reconsider. That is a great uh, thing I want to point out. At any point during the process that a funeral home is dealing with your family and the body, mm -hmm. a family always has that choice of choosing another funeral home. It may be inconvenient, mm -hmm. but they can always change funeral homes. So is there anything that the family has to do to prepare the body for a funeral home to take? Um, there is nothing specific. I mean, jewelry no. wise, or do you yeah. recommend people? Yeah, when, when we do meet for that first, um, that first arrangement conference is what we call it, um, we do talk about that. And they will normally come in a second time to drop some of those items off. But yes, jewelry, um, clothing, mm -hmm. uh, if there's anything that was to be placed in the casket, um, a picture of the deceased, mm -hmm. and that will help us with cosmetics if we're going to have an open casket, um, maybe for the obituary or our website. Mm -hmm. um, we see more and more funeral homes having, um, having a memorial um, websites for deceased, and normally there's a picture placed on that site, mm -hmm. so people can go and leave condolences there. Mm -hmm. So um, those are the main items. Okay, and we had a, a previous guest on that was talking about the death certificate, and mm -hmm. he was talking about how usually the funeral home has a pretty big role in that so, process. What yes. does that look like? Yes, um, it is our responsibility. Once we are called to um, called into duty by the family, then mm -hmm. it becomes our legal responsibility to create that death certificate. Mm -hmm. That is part of the arrangement conference. So the arrangement conference with the funeral home will normally last, it's about an hour and a half. I have heard of them being much quicker. If there are very little services, maybe a 30 minute to 45 minute meeting time and if it's a more um, it's a more um, elaborate type. yeah more more elaborate type of funeral we could um, sit there for two or three hours oh, wow. so during the conference yes we're discussing um, biographical information which we gather place on the death certificate mm -hmm. and that certificate is then brought to the doctor's office mm -hmm. the doctor signs it normally not immediately um, the turnaround time 24 to 48 hours of turnaround mm -hmm. time for the doctor. Then we go retrieve the death certificate from the doctor and the family reviews it. The family okays the death certificate, meaning they are happy with our grammar, our, um, our spelling of everybody's names, um, addresses, all of those mm -hmm. pieces of information. They're comfortable with the cause of death. Then we drop it off to the health department. Mm -hmm. And then the health department um, brings the death certificate to the register of deeds. Hmm. Then we go to the register of deeds another day later. So there's a lot of parts to this. And um, in the future, hopefully the near future, this will all be digitized. Mm -hmm. So we will, we will then simply be placing it onto a website, this information. Mm -hmm. The family can still review it. The doctor goes to the website, mm -hmm. puts in the cause of death, and it's all filed digitally. All we do is go to the register of deeds at that point. Mm -hmm. And that's the future. Wow, so those are quite a lot of steps in all there that. There are, absolutely. In a previous question, you mentioned the word embalming. What is that? Um, just a very basic definition. It's the preservation of the body. Mm -hmm. um, so um, what we're trying to do is have the body last longer than it would naturally. Um, and, and the point of that is? The point is, um, well, for instance, how about a family that um, maybe came from another state? 
mm -hmm. and, and or their children simply live maybe overseas and were waiting a week and a half to have a visitation. They want it open. They want the casket open. They want to see the body. Um, that is truly the only um, foolproof way to have that, you know, have that come into fruition because mm -hmm. you cannot have a body in refrigeration normally that long that and still issues. have a, yeah. have a comfortable visitation. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. So, what about a lot of people have very limited financial means? Are there low-cost burial options, and what Absolutely. about folks who have no funds? What happens to those people? Yes, um, well, let's see, I've got a list here of different options, and um, so, yeah, low-cost options. There are many low-cost, and it depends mm -hmm. where in the low-cost mm -hmm. you, you're, you're trying to fit in, and really it's also going to depend on what you want. For those families that really don't have a choice, and they, they simply have to rely only on costs, they don't care what the, the service or the disposition will be, mm -hmm. um, the, the, the most inexpensive I know is anatomical donation. So whether you're donating to a school like Duke or UNC mm -hmm. um, or an organization, um, there's a couple organizations I know in the state, in not the state, but in the United States um, that offer almost everything, if not everything, for free. Hmm. Interesting. So for the local schools here, the local universities, they do charge um, a transportation fee, which is which is normally done by a funeral home. Mm -hmm. They 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 expect the family to work with the local funeral home to transport the body to them mm -hmm. under normal circumstances. Um, so if they're working with an organization outside of the state, um, a national organization they normally cover everything for free. Mm -hmm. And what will happen is once the school or that organization is complete with their studies on the body, mm -hmm. um, the body is cremated and the family will get back the cremains in a very basic urn at a okay. later date. And that later date could be um, anywhere from a few months later to about a year later. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. So it could be, and you have no idea at the time how long. It's I don't. Be. I don't believe that, that they do. They don't no. give give any sense. No. I've often heard that people keep life insurance policies for a really long time with the idea that it's going to pay for the burial. Is mm -hmm. that is there a trick to that? Is I mean, do you get that yeah, money mean, right away? No. See, life insurance is termed that way because it's for the living, mm -hmm. and that's how I've always I've always looked at it. Um, but one of the misconceptions is that life insurance is going to be used to pay for somebody's funeral. I hear that all the time. Yeah, and, and the truth is it might, but it's never anything that I would tell anybody to expect. Mm -hmm. And there's a few reasons why you should never expect for um, life insurance to take care of somebody's burial and, um, or funeral. So I will say this, fewer funeral homes are accepting it, mm -hmm. okay? Um, one of the reasons is a pending cause of death. Mm -hmm. So if you know anything about life insurance, they will not accept um, a policy or they will, not, they will not give a payout to the policy until there's a cause of death, mm -hmm. okay? And that cause of death, um, you know, they'll have stipulations on what they're going to pay for and what they're not going to pay for. So for instance, let's say um, in the policy it said um, that if this was a suicide death mm -hmm. that we would not pay or the amount paid out would be 50%. Mm -hmm. So they want to see what that cause of death is. And um, if it's pending, there is no payout. And that pending death certificate may stay pending. I've seen a year and a half mm -hmm. in some goodness. cases. When they're just not sure of the cause? As they're not sure of the, co of the cause or this could be an issue with the state. Maybe they're, um, they're having um, issues with funding mm -hmm. the medical examiner. Mm -hmm. um, organization in the state and there's just not enough people to man the number of deaths and and do the research to find the cause of death and so what used to be maybe a three-month delay I've seen now a year a year and a half delay oh and so no funeral home is going to wait a year a year and a half for the money so does that mean these families are waiting that long for a death certificate no you will still get a death certificate okay. but it will be a pending certificate so with that pending certificate in most cases you can you can accomplish all of your estate, estate needs oh, good. I with that. Say, oh. It's from at least my experience, the mm -hmm. only thing you will need that cause of death 
for is insurance purposes. Okay. Um, one of the other things uh, you don't want to rely on health in or sorry life insurance mm -hmm. is because of uh, disputes between beneficiaries, mm -hmm. um, or if it's unknown. Sometimes the paperwork is unclear. Um, we've had the insurance companies say, um, "Well, uh, we see two beneficiaries here." And um, one was signed after the other, but we're not quite sure who this other person is. Mm -hmm. And then there's a delay. So there's another reason. And the last reason is um, some insurance companies will not do assignments to funeral homes, meaning mm -hmm. they will not send the funeral home a check mm -hmm. for the services. Mm -hmm. And um, if a funeral home isn't gonna have that, going to have that guarantee from the insurance company, then they're not necessarily going to get involved with that company. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yes. So let's talk about, instead of being in crisis mode, let's talk a little bit about pre-planning. Mm -hmm. Is that an option? What does that mean? And, mm -hmm. and I, from what I understand, that seems to be almost a gift to give a family member. Absolutely. But um, talk a little bit about that. Um, so planning in advance. I mean, the whole idea behind planning in mm -hmm. advance is not only getting to put your wishes on paper, but to allow your family um, to not have to worry about what you might have wanted. Mm -hmm. they, they won't have to think about the mites. It will all be there on the paper. Um, they can go into that arrangement conference without having to worry. Um, you're going to uh, probably have uh, your loved ones sitting there at the table. Some may not agree, mm -hmm. and this will allow them to all say, well, well we don't have to argue about anything because mom or dad said what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And so that's the main reason for pre-planning. And what does that process look like? Um, it's basically the arrangement conference that okay. we talked about, mm -hmm. but in advance. Okay. So we will talk about everything, including the obituary, the picture, cards, uh, the service type, cemetery location, um, the type of urn. Um, all of those things are and done is, in advance. But is it paid for in advance? It can be. It doesn't it's have to It's never mandatory, absolutely okay. not. But if there is um, one thing that would tie into what we were just talking about, the life insurance mm -hmm. aspect, there is um, pre-need insurance. So pre-need insurance. Pre-what? Pre-need. Pre-need. Okay. Pre-need insurance. That is exactly what you want to use to prepay okay. for your funeral. Okay. Because it is, it is money that you, are, that you are placing into an account. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a third-party account, meaning it is not the funeral home's money. Mm -hmm. And that money can go anywhere to any funeral home that you choose to go to, even if you leave the state, mm -hmm. even if the funeral home you originally planned with burns down or goes out of business, that uh, money it's is safe. still yours. It is safe to mm -hmm. go anywhere. And if you change your mind mm -hmm. for some reason? You can make payments mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. a pre-need account. Mm -hmm. You can't make payments normally after the funeral. Most funeral homes are wanting to be paid before the well, funeral. Just like any other service. It, it is a business. That's yes. right. So speaking of um, making your your wishes known in advance, how involved does the funeral home get with the services, and what types of services are available for families? So, uh, in in reference to um, memorial services mm -hmm. and, or, or and even full funeral, funeral services, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, many different types now. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about. Um, it was standard to just simply have the body present at a church. Um, mm -hmm. Now funeral homes do have their own chapels. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes the body is not present. We, we may have an urn, we may have nothing there. Um, we could have something called a celebration of life where people, um, their main reason for gathering is literally just to celebrate all the good things mm -hmm. about the person and there might not be any religious aspect to um, to that gathering or that service. Uh, we may have something very informal, which is just people getting up to speak, family and friends giving mm -hmm. remembrances mm -hmm. and, and memorialization memories of this person. And that may last an hour, just people getting up to speak. Um, we see various things like that. Um, it's really open to anyone's imagination at this point. Mm -hmm. So there's really no set way to do things. Mm -hmm. We always guide families, funeral directors will guide families in the best way to go about accomplishing what is important to them. Mm -hmm. What about personalization options? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think I've heard that there's a lot of different ways that you can actually make it a very personal experience besides mm -hmm. these ceremonies. What, what are some examples that you have? Um, yeah, there are various things. Um, cards have 
throughout history. I think cards have always been a, mm -hmm. a great way to memorialize somebody. Prayer cards have um, been done mainly with Catholics, but I see more and more families using mm -hmm. them for the purpose of um, uh, personalization. And they don't have to be religious. Mm -hmm. um, they could simply be a picture of the deceased on, on maybe one side of the card, and the back side was maybe their favorite poem or quote or, or, quote or prayer even. Um, we've had people do balloon releases um, and attach a tag with uh, the name and the dates of the person that passed away and we'll go outside the funeral home do a balloon release, a dove release. Um, we have done butterfly releases. Um, we've had memory cards um, placed out at the funeral home or the place of visitation. So this gives people an opportunity during the gathering, mm -hmm. whether that's before the service, after the service, or on its own evening, mm -hmm. um, it gives people a chance to write down their memories mm -hmm. on a card, and it's an index card, and we will give that card to the family the next day. You know, one of the things um, I, I love for you to talk a little bit about that I've personally witnessed is that everybody grieves very differently in mm -hmm. these services. It's a very emotional time. And sometimes I think families can get really caught up in the appearances of the way it should be, while other family members may grieve differently and may not be able to stay at a whole service mm -hmm. or may not be able to walk up to that casket. How can you help families sort of navigate through that? And, and do you play a role in that process when you notice families struggling? Um, a, a limited process. We are mm -hmm. not grief counselors. Mm -hmm. um, one of the main things we do after the service is give recommendations to um, local places that are offering complimentary bereavement options. Mm -hmm. I know luckily hospice mm -hmm. is one of mm -hmm. them. So um, in a limited fashion we will. Um, sometimes, sometimes it's just literally a family issue and it's nothing that we can get involved in mm -hmm. but if if we feel like we can assist in some way mm -hmm. of course we will um, I mean we've ha we've had people get up in the middle of the arrangement conference mm -hmm. and you know take a break take yeah take a break mm -hmm. it's okay 15 minutes step outside we all come back and join and mm -hmm. and, and we're better at that point mm -hmm. or somebody has finally said you know what I'm gonna let my brother handle all the decisions I'm gonna go home mm -hmm. you know and we work around it. Mm -hmm. So I guess lastly, if you could give some advice to those watching today on how to pick the right funeral home fit for them, what would you say they should look for? The right funeral home fit for you. Well, I, w I will give um, my opinion on this, which would be never to rely strictly on price mm -hmm. unless that is the only concern that you can have. Mm -hmm. um, if you're just in that sort of a financial situation where your budget will not allow you to do anything. Um, but my suggestion is to go to their website, mm -hmm. um, go to the funeral home, mm -hmm. um, make an appointment with a director, call them on the phone, um, and do this with at least two different places. And um, if you do get the opportunity to sit and talk with a director, um, just be aware of how you feel. If you feel comfortable mm -hmm. with who you're with, and at the place, mm -hmm. um, the facility, um, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling at all uncomfortable, um, if you're feeling uh, just, you're just not getting a great feeling about the place you are, the person you're with, mm -hmm. then that could be a, a sign of what services may come later. Mm -hmm. um, so just be aware of your feelings and go with um, a number of different factors. Go with the way you were treated, how comfortable, um, you felt and the price, they can all be um, part of your decision. Joe, it was a pleasure having you come on today and we really hope that those watching gathered some really great nuggets of information. You provided some valuable tidbits and I think uh, it was going to be well received. So we appreciate you being here. Absolutely, Nicole. Thank you for the invite.